Former Crimson Tide quarterback, Andrew Zhao. I hope you're doing well. Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. Man, I'm, thank you for having me, and I appreciate you, uh, you guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. And let me get an update on Andrew Zhao, man. What are you up to these days? Man, I, uh, I'm head football coach at Calera High School, uh, which is south of Birmingham. Uh, we just we were put out of the playoffs, went 8-4 and four, first season there. I uh, just left Montevallo. Uh, High school, which and, yeah, they were, they did well this past year too. Left that spot in a good, kept them in a good spot, and uh, they still got athletes and do a great job. But over clear now, um, and you know, raising my boys, man, they're they're uh, 18, 15, and, and 11 now. So, and uh, hopefully, I have one down at Tuscaloosa next year. He wants to be a doctor, so he's going to go down there. Hopefully. Okay, cool, cool. I, and and yeah. I remember the little guy. Uh, Back when you were playing here, he was, uh, I think it w- was his name Andrew as well? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Andrew, yeah. We called him AJ. AJ That's right. Uh, runs track for Thompson High School, and uh, Avery runs track for Thompson High School, and Ashton, he, he plays soccer, and we're all excited about them just being you know active and everyday lives and healthy. And uh, But AJ, he'll, hopefully he'll be uh, he'll be able to say we when he, come, when he graduates from the University of Alabama. No doubt, no doubt. That's a uh, uh, Andrew. I was talking with one of your former teammates yesterday, and I've already recorded the interview. Uh, I had a chance to visit with Jason McCadley, and, and matter of fact, I'm going to talk about the 2001 <laughs> play. Uh, but yeah. we were reliving, man, that victory on the plains, number two uh, down there. Man, what an awesome victory that was! Nobody really gave the Todd any chance, but uh, you guys showed up and showed out on that Saturday afternoon down in uh, Auburn, Alabama. Did and uh, I tell you what the the seniors and some of the upperclassmen got an opportunity to play that day and, and do well, show some of their talents. And, you know, Terry Jones Jr., Freddie Millens, uh, myself, and, uh, and Jason McCavley. And just uh, we just had an opportunity to get back on the field and do some things. I know I did anyway, but uh, it was a, a great game. Our guys really had a great game plan going in. Um, we played a heck of a game on both sides of the ball, and, uh, and the guys really got after it. Jason McCallie, man, don't get to see him or talk to him a whole lot, man, but I love to get out here. Sean Bohannon were my roommates for a few years and uh, really love those guys like brothers. No doubt. And, 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 and he pretty much said the same thing about you guys. And uh, that was a very close-knit group. And you guys had went through, obviously, some challenging times there. Coach DeBose being fired in 2000. And uh, it just seemed like the chemistry of that team, because you went through some adverse situations, uh, you guys were just a tight knit group. Yeah, we had to be. I know. Uh, you know what? I, and I always said if the, if our coaches were uh, were, on the, were not on the same page, our our team wouldn't be on the same page. But there were a couple of guys and, and a group of guys that were just tight enough to sort of try to hold everything together if we could. And uh, you know, got to that senior year and, and we were the upperclassmen. And um, going into that season, we felt like yeah, we could be a, a, a decent team. Um, with new staff in, but overall, I mean, those guys really uh, came together towards the end of that year because we started off the season three and five, uh, and then we just sort of ran the table after that to get into the a bowl uh, game, and, and Auburn was sort of in the way that year, so we we wanted it bad enough to, to, to spoil their victory or uh, spoil their chances of going to the SEC championship. And yeah, I'm trying to think. I, I go back that week. There was a lot of. Not a lot of comments on who was going to start as quarterback. Uh, if you remember that week, talk about that week and that competition or what exactly happened. When did you find out that you were going to, in fact, start on the road in the Iron Bowl uh, because you and Tyler uh, were battling as you guys did for several years here? Yeah, nothing too much was said within our locker room or within our team. I don't remember a whole lot being said. Um, I know Tyler had went down during the Mississippi State game that uh, the week before. And, uh, and, you know, I was the next guy up. Uh, so I just go into, I just went into that week practicing every day um, just like I normally would and got more reps because Tyler was not, not in. Um, but it was sort of known without saying anything that I would start because Tyler had, had really injured himself to a point where he would be out a few few more weeks. Um, but nothing was ever told me, hey, look, you're going to be the guy. It will say, look, next guy up basically, and you're getting your reps, you're getting more. Uh, and just take advantage of the opportunity. Uh, Coach Les Kenning did an outstanding job, who's now at UAB, but did an outstanding job of uh, just preparing me and uh, getting me ready to uh, to battle and, and uh, a team in Auburn that's that's ready to go to the SEC championship. But 
that week was it was was fun. It was me getting a chance to get back out there and uh, throw the ball around a little bit more um, no, than we normally would that year. And uh, guys really responded by by making plays when those those plays you know uh, presented themselves. As you're sitting around and you're talking about your kids prior to uh, us getting into the meat of the conversation here is talking to Andrew Zhao, former quarterback at the University of Alabama, as we continue this conversation. What are those stories that you share about the Auburn game, the Alabama-Auburn game? Uh, it's, it's weird because the, the Alabama-Auburn game is, is, is so, um, I mean, so intense that there were moments I can remember just laughing on the field with uh, Terry Jones Jr. and uh, Antonio Beard about who's blocking who and uh, and them laughing about, uh, no, I got him, no, you got him. And, uh, but talking to my kids, my kids are, they, they love to hear the stories, but at the same time, they're into their own world of, you know, dad's dad's dad, and, uh, <laughs> and, and I'll get a chance to sit down and put them on my knee anymore to, to sort of talk football, but uh, they, enjoy, they enjoy just me talking and, and other people actually coming up to me and we, we're talking football and um, and they may say, "Oh no, Dad, I didn't know you did that," or things like that. But um, you know, we're we're so into you know what Coach Saban is doing down there right now. My wife's not, if, if, if anyone, but uh, but no, we we really uh, enjoy what's going on down there now. And I don't get a chance to talk about the, the old days too much unless I get around some of those guys. But uh, my kids really enjoy football and enjoy uh, you know Alabama. I wouldn't say they enjoy football; they really enjoy Alabama and what Todd is doing. But uh, it's, uh, it's it's great times and uh, for us right now, and great to be an Alabama guy. All right, so let, let let's lead into it. As a guy that's played at that quarterback position, let me get your thoughts on Mr. Jalen Hurts uh, and the job that he's done here in Tuscaloosa this year. Yeah, he's done an outstanding job, and I and I really uh, uh, am excited of what he can do in the future. I think he continues to develop as a quarterback. I like to see him um, you know, dissect the defense a little bit more when it comes to just picking them apart. Uh, he, he throws the deep ball well, uh, but I say, man, what a talent! To, and, and you see, no emotions on his face when it comes to stressful situations, or uh, he just goes about his business. And that's what I think a lot of people really like about him—that you do not see the the extra stuff that you may see from other quarterbacks. You see a guy goes in with a straight face and, and does it the right way. Um, I'm I, as a quarterback, uh, and I'm—he's a—he's a big kid or a decent sized kid. He. Uh, I'm a really I'm concerned about him running the ball because I don't know uh, can we handle it uh, from the from the backup position. But uh, you know from what he's done so far, man, he's he's all that and then some. To be an 18, 19 year old kid who just left high school ball to come in and play the way he's played is uh, is very special. And I think uh, as Alabama fan and Alabama Alabama alumni, uh, I think uh, we should really. Uh, appreciate what's going on right now because it is special not only what coach Saban is doing but what this kid is doing at the quarterback position in the SEC at the University of Alabama Andrew going back to Jalen Hurts for a couple of minutes you talked about Mm -hmm. dissecting the defense is that just something that comes with more experience more time that's not something that's just automatic uh it just comes by game time experience uh am I right or wrong yeah you're right you know it's going to take time you know because I sometimes I I'm I'm looking for more, you know. I, I'm coaching and I'm looking at quarterbacks. I'm wanting them to do more, and I'm looking at him and, and probably thinking the same thing. But what he's doing now is is outstanding, and Coach Kiffin is protecting him um, with some of his throws. But you, you will see this kid he's developed into a prototypical quarterback where he will be dissecting defenses, and it will it won't take long. Like next year, I could see him really um, picking his game up and and taking it to another level. And, uh, and he may not run the ball as much, but he could be just as, as effective by throwing the ball and getting it to playmakers that are around him. But um, him dissecting defenses will be very special uh, because you see he understands the game. He understands his, uh, his ability, and, and um, he does a great job with when he needs to run it, he runs it. And uh, he'll definitely you know, throw it deep, and, and that's special to see. And uh, like I say, his first touchdown to – I think it was our Darius Stewart in the, in the dome was, was something I'll always remember because I thought it was one of the one of the tougher throws, but um, it left uh, his hands pretty quick and it got down there uh, to, to our Darius pretty quick as well. No doubt, no doubt. We're talking to Andrew Zhao right now as we start to finish up the conversation. All right, you you played with some pretty good offensive guys. You've named a couple of those: Jason McCadley, Freddie Mill, and Sean Alexander. Uh, you started lining up a pretty good little all-star lineup. 
Uh, could this offense score against this current defense? Oh, man. Uh, I'll be honest with you, probably not. Uh, I don't see too many people doing it. I've seen great offenses go up against this defense. Uh, it'll be a battle between Coach Stubbs and, and Coach, uh, Coach, Coach uh, Saban. But I, I will say this. My see, uh, junior year, uh, I did uh, uh, play against Coach Saban his first year at uh, LSU. Right. Uh, that, that was the first time Alabama had lost down to uh, lost in Baton Rouge since '68, '69, or something like that. So um, defense is tough. Those guys get after you, uh, and what he has down there right now is sort of just started me finished talking with David Duvall and uh, just remembering the things they were doing down there a couple of years ago, uh, and what they're doing now is that this defense is, uh, is is strong. I mean, you think about it from the front seven to the back end, and I also saw Marlon Humphrey down there, had a chance to talk to him with, uh, about his dad, you know, his dad and our good buddies, but just the athletes they have down there, I, I remember having you know, Chris Samuels, who was probably the prototypical court, um, offensive lineman, and now they have those guys all over the place. They have them from a standpoint of these guys on the offensive line and defensive line, and they're 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 tier one guys. I mean, you can't, you can't really, uh, you find those guys everywhere, but our offense against that defense will be a great matchup. At the same time, uh, I would like to probably be the uh, the guy that's sort of calling the shots, not the guy you know getting hit. How would you attack this defense, though? I mean, it, as far as being from an offensive mind, do you see a way that you could have some success against this defense? Not not just you. I'm just talking about it as an as an right. offensive minded guy calling some plays. Uh, do you see where this defense could be a little vulnerable? Any area that you would try to attack if you were an OC? Yeah, I would definitely try to keep the ball on the edges, but you know it's hard to run the ball up the middle. And if you can get a hat for a hat, and your guys can can manhandle those guys up front from the defensive uh, line standpoint, um, you may have some success. Double moves may help you, but you know I'm not trying to give anybody, especially Auburn, any uh, any tips. But at the same time, I think what Coach Saban does is, is his halftime adjustments are so good that he has something ready for every offense that sort of comes out there. Uh, you could you could tell by, you know, that third quarter if the adjustments are going to work or not. But uh, his uh, his dissecting an offense and what he can and cannot do by cutting it in half, uh, cutting the, the field in half and, and, and stopping what you do best. And his biggest thing, I think, Coach Saban, to stop you from running up the middle. If you can run the ball up the middle, you can have some success. But I don't see too many teams being able to do that because, up front, they're so big and strong, and their gap sound. They don't, they don't, they don't give up anything in the middle because their guys are so good. And then the other side is that if when you try to, like I said before, try to get the ball to the edges, the linebackers fly out so well, and those safeties are so involved in the run game that it's really nowhere to go. Corners do a great job of keeping, uh, maintaining the edge, which is always good. Uh, so going at this defense, you have to really man up, and it's like going against the NFL team. It, it, you really have to be able to. Um, pound the ball. And if you can't do that, then you have a hard time uh, in the run game or a hard time that, that entire day. Andrew, final couple of questions here. What do you see in the Auburn yep. Tigers in this game? Man, they're always dangerous because of Malzahn. I, I believe that. Uh, I was speaking to someone earlier about that same thing. Of, of I know Alabama's supposed to win the game, and I know they're supposed to win in a certain way. But with Auburn uh, and the offense that they run, if they can run the ball, and that's once again, run the ball between the tackles. If they can do that, they're going to be a dangerous team to stop because once they get rolling, they move the ball so fast. So he'll continue to do that and end up hurting you in the long run. So uh, I say they're a dangerous team. And if they can't throw the ball and Alabama can with the front six or seven guys, you know, Auburn's going to have a long day. But I also say that if they ever get it rolling, they can throw the ball a little bit. And some of those trick plays that I know Malzahn is going to come up with, drive me crazy. I know it's going to drive Coach crazy, but uh, they're going to be a dangerous team. You know, I know years before, they've opened up and they've made run three or four trick plays to get you on your heels, and uh, they do a good job at that. So uh, I'm looking forward to a, a tough game, tougher than um, everyone thinks. Do you think this team has what it takes to win the national title? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, looking at the other teams in the that are out there right now, uh, there are things that I thought you know, that can give us problems, but somehow this defense sort of keeps this team uh, winning, uh, whether it be you know, doing enough to stop someone offensively and then turn around, I mean, defensively and then turn around offensively and score enough points to beat 
your your Ole Miss and uh, or your your Arkansas, and then defensively to stop LSU and stop your offense, stop LSU to hold them to zero points. So they balance pretty well. I think they're all doing a great job. And I'm saying it on not only just your X's and O's, but I go back to even Coach Cochran in, in the weight room. His his mental attack to these guys, getting them focused and getting them pumped up to really go out here and play a game, uh, is is unbelievable. And uh, you know what they're doing down there is, is pretty good. And, and year in year out, I said if you have a playoff system, regardless if it's the top four, or top eight. Alabama's going to be in that run, and I think they're more built like an NFL team, and if they're a playoff team, um, yeah, they can be dangerous um, from anywhere. So uh, I look, I look forward to this team to probably running the table. I think their biggest uh, problem right now, honestly, and I and I know I'm talking about next game, but Auburn, I think Auburn's the, the biggest threat right now, and and uh, and and maybe someone in that first round of playoffs, but. If they get to the game, I mean, it's, it's a pretty much a wrap, I believe, if they continue to focus like Coach uh, expects them to.